Hello and welcome to Jessie Bar Book Club. Today we are going to be ranking about The Tudor Secret by C. W. Gortner. I have read a number of Gortner's books in the past, but not for many years, including The Queen's Vow, The Last Queen, and The Confessions of Catherine de' Medici. I always found his books fun, silly historical fiction, leaning more heavily on the fiction side. However, However, I haven't read one of his fully fictional books before about a fictional character. This book, The Tudor's Secret, is free on Audible, and that is the reason I have chosen it. I know my viewers love Tudor content, so I thought I would give them some Tudor content. However, this book is really, really bad, and I only made it a quarter of the way through. So this is my rant. The main character in this book is called Brendan Prescott, and he is an orphan who is adopted by the Dudley family. He is completely fictional, and from the offset of this book, I am getting historical fiction, fan fiction vibes. Everything is over-described, over-dramatic. He spends ages naming things. Everyone has an odd name who isn't real. If it's not a real historical character, he's given them a odd name like Peregrine. It can be very hard to read historical fiction when the main character is fictional because you're not invested in them because they didn't exist, especially when they're put in a world that did exist. I really like Ken Follett's historical fiction because he created a fictional town, but when it's historical fiction and it's a fictional character interacting with real characters that existed, I get lost very fast and find it hard to care. Anybody else agree? Not only is it hard to get invested in characters that don't exist in real life, all the historical characters in this book are caricatures of themselves. Cecil is a suave spy baster in his big black cloak, billowing about being secretive. Elizabeth is sneaky and seductive. Robert Dudley is gallant with a naughty side, and Guilford is his whoremonger, stupid, drunk little brother. However, the worst caricature in this book is definitely Her Grace, Duchess Frances Brandon, who they turned into some sort of ogre. I think when this book was set, Frances Brandon was in her late 30s, maybe early 40s, being generous. I couldn't be bothered looking her age up. But in this book, she's more like 70, and that is not the case. Also, Gautner decided to give our main character, Brendan, a rose symbol birthmark that somehow denotes his importance. I hate stuff like this. If you're going to do magic, do it well. If you're going to do symbolism, do it well. This was not done well. It was clunky and awkward and smacked of Wattpad. Not this and Wattpad. Some of that stuff on there is good but this was not good. Getting back to the somewhat plot of this book, there is no way Cecil is as important at this point in Tudor history at the death of Edward VI as he became later in Elizabeth's reign. He did not have this massive spy network that he had later in life, and it just bugged me. Also, the sign of the rose is so obviously going to be a symbol that Brendan is Henry VIII's bastard son or something of the like, that I have absolutely no interest in what is going to happen. I know this is wrong, but I'm going to stop the book. I had to stop reading. This book is as if somebody has read all the Philippa Gregory books, especially The Virgin's Lover and The Queen's Fool, and decided to make a fan fiction based in that universe, and somehow it got published. No wonder it's free on Audible. It's so bad. Also... Brendan having a servant called Peregrine is just so stupid. It has millennial ridiculous naming written all over it. And I'm a millennial, so that's not saying much. I actually was planning to take this book seriously and review it seriously, and it turned into a rant because it's so bad. I got a quarter of the way through, and I, I couldn't bring myself to read any more of it. Even though it was free, I couldn't bring myself to read any more of it. I read his other books when I was about 19, I think. Between, I'd say, 17 and 19, I read the other books, The Queen's Vow, The Last Queen, Catherine Medici's Confessions. 
And now I wonder if they were also this bad or if this is just terrible. Because you have to buy his other books on Audible. So maybe this is a terrible spin-off that he tried that went nowhere. Anyway, rant over. Bye. I'm sorry I had to share how bad this was because I want nobody else to read it. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. All the good stuff.